Um, oh, thanks, geez. Welcome back to another episode. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about my past inshore fishing experiences um, and what I've learned from them. Uh, basically try to give you guys inshore fishing tips that'll be really uh, useful in the upcoming months. Um, and for the past two months, I've been just doing a lot of research, a lot of learning, um, and I've come up with a, a couple uh, really cool tips and uh, baits that I've been using uh, to capitalize on more uh, bites, whether it's inshore or um, even freshwater um, for that matter. Also, December 18th, uh, we are going to Flamingo, Everglades National Park, and we're doing a three-day tournament. So we're gonna go down there camping, really cool experience. Uh, we're definitely gonna come out with a vlog uh, on that experience. And we're going out on the new uh, Ginu 13-footer. Uh, this is a low sider. Um, and I've got a Mercury six horsepower four stroke on the back. Um, I really, really wanna start using this Ginu in the channel. Can't wait to get you guys some more clips um, on this boat. I think it's gonna be absolutely amazing. So back to what I was saying, um, as far as tips, lately I've been doing a lot of mangrove coastline fishing. Um, and basically my top two lures have been the twitch bait, um, the mirror lure twitch bait, and then um, a lot of like paddle tail zooms um, and a lot of uh, plastics, a lot of soft plastics. And the reasoning behind that is nothing particular. Um, it's just what I've been getting the most bites on. Um, and for the past couple days, I guess, since the wind started to pick up, the temperature started to change, the water's been really stirred up um, in the areas and very milky where we were going. Um, and I was throwing a lot of, uh, you know, like the white zoom baits, the natural colored Mirodine, Miro Lure, um, Bass Reaper, uh, Paddle Tails, just a lot of white colored and natural colored baits. And it hasn't been all too great, to be honest. I have a, I have a feeling when the water's really stirred up like that, and I've read it before and I know it, um, but I, I just didn't listen to my own advice, they weren't getting a profile. Um, these fish, these snook, they were, it was almost, I saw the silhouette of a snook, I threw the bait right on his face, and he still didn't really see it. Had enough time to change my bait to like more of a root beer colored, uh, dark, uh, almost like a dirt or like a dark brown, um, colored uh, DOA shrimp with a chartreuse tail, threw it right in the same exact spot, did not even hesitate to, to munch on it. Um, and I think it has a lot to do with the darker the profile, the easier it is uh, for these fish to see it in really stirred up milky water, which is what we're going to be seeing now in the fall for the first couple months because the weather is changing, the, the, uh, the wind's picking up, um, and a lot of sand and sut is getting stirred around. So it does play a role, and that was one of my biggest mistakes um, as an inshore fisherman was not really playing the cards right when it comes to the baits that I was using um, and whether that's using the wrong bait or the wrong colored bait uh, I really did learn that a lot better um, and the other thing I've started to tackle a lot uh, more in depth was uh, the tides I've always known about tides the only thing is I haven't learned properly how to read the tides um, the difference between two outgoing tides and two incoming tides um, until recently, you know, literally the past couple months is when I've really gone in depth into that and it has changed the game. So if you're watching this video and you haven't really learned the tides, there's a couple really great videos um, that explain uh, the tides, uh, baits to use. And I'm gonna link that in the description. They're not even my videos. I just want you guys to get on track um, the same way I did and it really helped me improve the game uh, of fishing. So you guys can check those uh, videos out once we're done here, um, the link's in the description. So back to the tides, I learned that um, when it's an outgoing tide, uh, particular, um, particularly the outgoing tides that's going from maybe like uh, a couple feet all the way to, you know, um, minus, you know, almost like minus a foot or inches, right? So it's a really, really big um, gap that that's going down, really sharp curve on the, t on, the, on the tide table. Those days, the water is moving extremely, extremely fast. Right, so that means a lot of these baits are getting pushed out of the mangroves, swirled around, um, and they're having a hard time uh, staying out of the current. This is allowing a lot, a lot of these bigger fish like the snook and tarpon to just kind of hang out, be really lazy, and just pick these baits off and chill. So those days that you see those really radical um, tides and it lines up with the, day, the time that you're going out, maybe at seven in the morning, it's going from um, a slack tide and then boom, pushing down to an outgoing or incoming tide, whatever, you're fishing that peak of the chart table. And what I mean is you're not fishing that little curve right at the top where it's kind of plateaued, you're fishing the peak. You know, the water's ripping, the water's moving. The moment I started paying more attention to the tides, it really, really changed the game for me, big time. 
Um, and that was probably the biggest uh, factor in, um, in fishing for me. And it, whether it was the incoming tide or the outgoing tide, it's just the tides in general. Um, and I'll, I'll get into what I like, what I prefer uh, in terms of tides. I really do like the incoming tide more than the outgoing tide. Um, and it's only because I love fishing the mangroves. And with the incoming tide, all these baits now have a chance to kind of get into um, these little mangroves and just kind of chill um, and, and avoid the current, avoid predators. You know, during an outgoing tide, a really low tide, there is no water under the mangroves and a lot of fish can't really have a haven in there. And um, it wasn't until recently that I started using the outgoing tide to kind of just pitch, you know, um, the zooms that I was talking about or any, any lure for that matter into these mangroves to try to see if I could get a bite. And um, the moment I started doing that, it really did change the game. So um, if you guys are really into the, you know, the mangrove fishing, flipping at the docks, um, anything that has to do with structure that's kind of coastal, you want to just wait for that really uh, late end uh, incoming tide. That's going to be a game changer for you. And it was for me. Um, like I said, this is just personal preference down here in South Florida, what I've noticed. I'm sure, you know, you start going to other tidal zones, it's going to change the game. Um, and you guys have your own little... Uh, system that you guys go by but for me incoming tide has been a game changer with the coastal structures like the docks the markers the buoys you know the other day we didn't see any triple tail um, in flamingo uh, on an outgoing tide and then on an incoming tide they were everywhere they were floating around like plastic bags it was crazy um, and uh, we, we we were able to capitalize a little bit more on the triple tail um, on the incoming tide so it's those little like uh, those little specifics that you kind of like, you know, you got to go out there and maybe write on your phone on notes like, oh, you know, today the tide was this, this, the time was this, and this is the fish that we caught. Then you can start building up a little book. And I started doing that myself. I've got a little notebook where I just write the tides, how we did, um, and how the weather was and all that stuff. And you'll see that there is a sort of repetition um, behind the whole, you know, there's there's a method to the madness, in other words. Um, and, I, and I started able, I was starting to um, be able to pick up on these little, uh, patterns and then I'm able to fish a lot better and a lot more effectively um, and I, I, I would like to classify myself as still you know learning for sure you know I I, um, I want to completely start reading the you know a lot of these guys are reading the tides the moon uh, which play really hand in hand uh, the weather the temperature all this stuff is like all oh, stuff I'm getting really used to and learning um, but over the past couple months it's really been a game changer for me um, it's really important to understand the way the fish are eating based off the seasons um, now in the winter uh, the water's a lot more oxygenated there's a lot of oxygen in the water the fish fight harder uh, but they're also a little bit cooler but they, they're able to fight longer not necessarily harder but longer there's a lot more oxygen um, and this produces more bait fish and more you know you got the mullet run this time of year um, the shrimp start running so this time of year is really interesting and it's really cool because everything's in a frenzy before the winter. Everything's trying to get fat before the winter. Um, high oxygen levels in the water, tons of bait flowing, makes for great fishing. So now in the fall would be a great time to get your boat in order, uh, get your gear, whatever it is, you're fishing off a bridge, whatever it might be, now's the time in South Florida. I'm not too sure about other places, but in South Florida now the shrimp starts running. Um, everything kind of just starts going AWOL in the winter all the way kind of through the first couple months, uh, excuse me, through the fall all the way to the first couple months of the winter and inshore wise um, it has been really cool to see what we had in the summer very lethargic fish you kind of had to go hunting for these things now I feel like that with the current that's kind of you know that fall current um, the water is getting nice and stirred up it's a lot easier to start using the shrimp lures um, this time of year you'll catch me using DOAs gulps um, all sorts of stuff to get on these reds and snook um, and the tarpon especially all the smaller juvie tarpon um, in the back country, you know, let's say you're going to, um, you're gonna get in the car, go head out to a, a random spot, and you're looking for tarpon, it might be smart to go ahead and pack shrimp lures because that's what they're munching on in the winter and late fall. Um, all the shrimp starts coming, and it's really important to understand what these fish are eating in that time of the year. Um, and that, that was one thing that, you know, when I was still, um, you know, before I started taking fishing a little bit more serious and I wanted to, you know, not serious, but I wanted to cap, I wanted more fish. I wanted to catch more. And before I started taking the steps to get to that, I would go, you know, let's say it's the winter, you know, it'd be a good time to throw maybe a shrimp lure or uh, a, a soft plastic or whatever it might've been at that point. 
Um, I would throw the complete opposite thing. I would get a couple bites here and there, but nothing to write home about. And um, for me, getting to understand how these fish are eating, whether it's bass, you know, lar uh, largemouth bass, whether it's redfish, sea trout, snook, whatever it might be, it's important to understand what they're eating that time of year. Ask around uh, your local guide or, you know, go to the bait shop, whatever it might be. You know, that's, I, I went on Google, I did a lot of Google research um, and all of that was great, but nothing beats going to have a conversation in the bait house or with a charter guy um, and basically just saying, what's biting right now? What are the redfish usually eating in the winter? Uh, what are the sea trout usually eating in the winter? Um, you know, there's a ton of little steps that you guys can take to improve your game, and that's exactly what I did. Went to local shops like Bird Road Bait Shop, um, El Capitan, uh, a ton of places, and they were super um, excited to give me the news of, yeah, man, you were doing this completely wrong, or, uh, hey, that was right, you know, good job on that part, or whatever it might have been. Uh, but definitely go to your local guys, man. Those are the people who know best about the area, um, and they'll put you onto more fish than you could ever imagine. Um, and that's basically what I wanted to do with this video guys. I wanted to explain how I've been getting on fish recently um, Steps I've been taking and also what it is that I did to kind of up my game a little bit I'm no obviously I'm no pro whatsoever, but I do like fishing and I, and I take um, pride in it And I and I like to you know learn. It's just something that I like to do um, And over the past couple uh, Weeks it's really been you know the tips that I just gave you guys has really been a game changer for me um, and it's got me on at least 10 times more fish by following those little steps. Um, it's been absolutely great. I know I talked about it already, but um, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe, guys. Uh, we're going to be taking this guy out real soon. Um, there's a couple things I wanted to do to the lower unit. Um, it's overheating, so I assumed me and a friend assume that it's going to be probably a water pump, impeller, um, something of that nature. If you guys have any recommendations, go ahead and comment that, uh, down below. Uh, that way we can get this thing on the water. Uh, before December 18th uh, but like I said guys that is gonna be a sick video three days um, two nights three days in Flamingo it's super sick um, we're gonna get on it's just an absolute fishing weekend um, and it's gonna be tournament style so a lot of competition um, biggest fish a lot of cool stuff gonna happen you're gonna want to subscribe for that video uh, once again guys thank you for taking your time watching all the way through this video it really helps uh, leave a like comment below and subscribe if you're not part of the family um, lots of videos to come guys. I know I've been slacking, but lots of videos to come. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.